Okay. So, Father, we thank you for your words. We thank you for the viewers. We thank you, Lord, that we want truth. This is a day and hour that you're opening eyes. and we're, We want to be a part of that group that sees truth, proclaims truth, stands for truth. And we promise to give you alone all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I'm going to start off. I, last week, if you have not heard that message, it would be good to get that one about the Passion Bible. I might just review a second of it, but we want to go into some other translations and also start off with uh, what's the most traveled place that's not found on, that is, I better put my glasses on, this is small print. What's the most traveled place that is not found on Earth? It's in space. Is it space? The moon? Mars? Guess what? Heaven. This is what they're saying, okay? That's right. Heaven is most frequently visited place by those who profess by teaching the church new revelation. Yeah. So this is part of what's going on in the new apostolic reformation they say are, they aren't a part of. But they're all having um, trips to heaven. They're having new revelations as they go there. Of course, God's giving them a new Bible new translations, uh, the Passion Bible is a part of that. Uh, it was published by Bo Broad Street Publishing. It's growing in popularity, especially with the youth, which claims success in revealing the deep mysteries of the scripture in the love language of God. Now that right there should be a red flag because God is not only a God of love, he's also a God of judgment. The author claims Jesus visited him personally and took him to the library of heaven. And he's going back to heaven and will be given a brand new chapter, John 22. Critics call the Bible, the NAR Bible, the Passion Bible. John 22, he said, tells of the greatest revival the world is yet to see. Now in Hebrews 1, in verse 1, in the past, God spoke to us by the prophets. In these days, he speaks to us by what? His son. Jesus and the word are one. So he spoke to us in times past by prophets. These people want to be equal to God, equal to the prophets of old, and on and on it goes. We found out last week, Revelations 22, 18 and 19, don't add to the Bible or don't take away. Proverbs 30, verse 5 through 6, every word of God is pure. He's a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Verse 6, add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Now to continue on with this heaven thing, uh, Paul the apostle went once to heaven, and he was told it was illegal to speak on it. He didn't talk about it. John the apostle had a vision and was allowed to speak, commissioned to write of what he saw, because it had to do with the last days. And it would become our scripture. There are others in our day whom speak of traveling to heaven as if it's a constant occurrence. Um, people are saying God takes them to heaven all the time. What's the matter with you? Why aren't you going? Uh, they come back with messages from God to the church. And some of these people have tours of heaven for over two, two years saying they visited it hundreds of times. So what are they saying about these heavenly trips? Um, this one person said, I've been caught up to heaven. This is, uh, all I'll say was, is, they have pink hair. The person I'm talking about. You might know who this is. I've been caught up into heaven like John in Revelation for the purpose of sharing it to others. So here we have the danger because this person's revelation goes far beyond John's and anything Paul had to say, right? And she's putting herself on equal status with an apostle who wrote the last book of the Bible. This is dangerous waters. Her revelation will usher in the greater glory, is what she says, instead of the great darkness that now covers the earth. In these last days, she says, more and more people will be caught up, caught up in the heavenlies. Uh, she says, in the great library of heaven, now that kind of ties into what we we're talking about, the Passion Bible, uh, the great library of heaven, there are books that are set aside and will be released and written on earth. If an angel from heaven teaches contrary to God's word, what are we to, to do with that teaching? 
We are to reject it. Galatians 1, 8 through 9. They're rewriting the Bible from experiences, presenting a completely different end times plan. The Bible says it's going to get darker and the times are going to get worse. They say heaven is coming to earth. First they go and then they bring the heaven to them, to the earth. But this isn't what the Bible says. Uh, they have these angels that are connected to channeling and automatic writing. Found, it's, where is this found? It's found in the occult and the new age. It's brought into the church by new revelations or new revelators. These scribe spirits are surfacing everywhere, channeling new revelation to anyone who wants to go beyond the word. Uh, just a couple more things here. Paul gave Apollos and himself examples to the church in 1 Corinthians 4, 6, that you may learn in us not to think beyond what is written. New revelations certainly puffs one up. They think they are more sp chosen to deliver the Bible, putting themselves in a position God did not put them. And just think, if you don't have the right apostle, you might be missing it, according to them. You have to stay connected to them because they're hearing from God all the time, and you just might miss out. God's not going to do that. He's not going to choose certain people. He's given us the Bible, right? Now the thing we have to watch out for is the new translations of the Bible. It was not an angel, but it was Jesus who told John in Revelations 1.11, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia. This became our scripture, and we can be assured as its truth. The scriptures tell the truth, and the world will grow more wicked. The devil will set up his kingdom and persecute true Christians. That's what's coming according to the Bible, the revelation we all should be listening to. Uh, there's a couple of things that I wanted to say of what they say they're finding in heaven, and you find out if this is in the Bible. The scriptures tell the truth. The world will grow cold, as we know. Um, what they're saying is you can go to heaven in different ways. Okay, you want to know how you get there? Uh, transports that come in many different models. This transport looks something like a cable car without the cables. Wow. This was what someone else said, copying the same, someone else that so-called went to heaven. Um, then they said, if you can't get there by a cable car, you can go by a motorcycle. Uh, there are also, this is sad, but this is filled in these churches. This is just what's going on. There are also motorcycles with hyperdrive that you can travel by. And children ride on hoover boards. She even refers to the Jetson cartoons that she saw in heaven. And lastly, on this one, <clears throat> she said, and it's not just her, but there's other people that are in this New Apostolic Reformation that are saying the same, God does, does make special places in heaven just for kids. Are you ready for this? They have a place called Jell-O Land. Why? Because kids like Jell-O, but it's even more fun when you jump on it and eat it at the same time. All the buildings, the streets, everything is made out of jello. I mean, who could even believe that? And then she said, all kinds of flavors, it's not going to melt. And then she said, you can learn to fly like Superman. And one of the really exciting things I found out is who teaches you. It will be Christopher Reeves. Yes, he made it to heaven. And you, <laughs> you know one of his best roles he ever played on earth was Superman? He still gets to use that in heaven. I know. <laughs> we'll stop with that one right now. But uh, we want to talk a little bit about another translation. And it's actually, this is something you can get. It's very cheap. Warren B. Smith. I like his stuff. Warren B. Smith. There's a lot of other Smiths out there uh, that are, this is Warren B. Smith. He came from the New Age, so he can spot it and he exposes it because he came out of there and became a Christian. This is his little book, uh, Eugene Peterson's Mixed Message, uh, Bible for a New Age. And I used to preach out of the Message Bible back in my other church. And 
uh, I didn't just preach from there, but I would use different translations. And when I found out this was New Age, I was just repenting again, once again. <laughs> uh, so the message is the Bible for the New Age. So what is the New Age? And being that Warren Smith came out of it, he said, most people do not understand that the New Age, new spirituality has been and continues to be the driving force moving the world and the church towards a new world religion. What is that new world religion? A lot of it's going to be New Age. And it's been a part of our churches for a long time. Uh, it reaches that we are all one and we're all part of God because God is in everyone and everything. The doctrine of oneness is a foundational doctrine of the New Age, New World religion. And it's very critical that we recognize in 11, especially New Age 11 that's in our churches, when it appears in more recent Bible translation, like the message. Now the message was written in 1993 and 2003, maybe it had an update, I don't know. But The Voice was written in 2012, and The Passion was written in 2017. A clear example of how New Age teachings are often hidden in plain sight is seen in The Voice translation of 2 Peter 3.18 when, when compared to the King James Version. Now the King James Version in 2 Peter 3.18 says, Grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Now the voice, instead grow in grace and in the true knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus, the anointed, to whom be glory now and until the coming of the new age. Right there. Coming of the new age. Now another one. In the Message Bible, the King James says in Matthew 6, 9, 10, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Now the Message says, Our Father in heaven, reveal who you are. Set the world's right. Do what's best as above, so below. Now when you hear that so above, so below, you need to know what that really means. It's a term to unlock all occultic pra practices. And also, God is in everything and man is divine. God is in heaven, man is below. It's as at earth, as is in heaven, as above, so below. So instead of in earth as it is in heaven, the Message Bible is as above, so below. This may seem harmless to most people. He says, but as a former New Ager, I recognize as above, so below for what it was, an ancient mystical new age concept that is said to be the key to all magic and all mysteries. Now the whole mysteries, you have to have these secret uh, mysteries, that's Gnosticism. And they keep thinking they can go to another level. And that's all part of what a lot of us came out of in the word of faith, which is merging with all these other things, the latter, the latter rain, and we, we talked last week about how the Bibles are going to change and just some of the words, the key words are changed little by little. And the first time I recognized it was good news for modern man. That translation totally lost me. So many different things, so many different word changes there. But <clears throat> there's so many with this new age said to be the key of all magic and all mysteries. So they're bringing it into our churches and into our Bibles. And so we have to have people, pastors, teachers, leaders, tell the truth. So once they study and show themselves approved, then they have to share it. Because that's what we do. That where Bible says we're supposed to study to show ourselves approved. Um, universal oneness is a new age lie. God is not in everyone and everything. So this is the New Age significance, as above, so below, that's in the Message Bible. Um, the significance of this phrase is that it is believed to hold the key to all mysteries. All systems of magic are claimed to function by this formula. That which is above is the same as that which is below. The universe is the same as God. God is the same as man. 
So a lot of times people don't understand that some of these things are totally right out of the new age and they just gloss over it because they don't know what to look for. Now another one, and the last one I'm going to use from this, is Romans 15.13 in the King James versus the Message Bible. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Now the message says, oh, may the God of green, may the God of green, hope, may the God of green hope fill you with joy, fill you up with peace so that your believing lives, filled with the life-giving energy of the Holy Spirit which will brim over with hope. Let me say that again. Oh, may the God of green hope fill you up with joy, fill you up with peace so that your believing lives filled with the, your believing lives filled with the life-giving energy of the Holy Spirit will brim over with hope. The word green, a lot of people don't understand that. I taught this years ago. I have a, a book on the green gospel. The word green for most people has come to mean recycling, reducing our carbon footprint and overall good stewards of the earth. However, the word green has also come to represent some of the more extreme environmental activism and earth worship defined with paganism, witchcraft, and the New Age movement. Our online site straightforwardly states that the word green is synonymous with the term New Age. The green movement is completely associated with Gaia, and earth worship and has been described as being at the very heart of the global green agenda. Consistent with the New Age teachings, Gaia philosophy is the belief that humanity can save Mother Earth by recognizing its oneness with her. Gaia is also acknowledged to be part of the green agenda for a united green religion. The all-encompassing green movement is presently and actively promoting current environmental practices popular with progressive politicians and new age spiritualists and a green new deal is already in the works which i've already taught on the green new deal so that's kind of the the whole thing with new translations and especially if they're given out in church and sold in church bookstores you think that you're safe right but little by little They've been changing things, and most people don't notice. Now, in 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, he said, let no man deceive you. Well, we have to make sure that we're not being deceived. If somebody yeah. comes and teaches another Bible, we're not supposed to say, oh, yay, like I did when, actually, uh, now that I know it's a new apostolic pastor, gave me that Bible way back, way back in the day. And I thought, well, how nice of them. Well, now I see it was to infiltrate what I taught. And most people have no clue that these Bibles are changing. And, it, and we're not done with their, their changing. It's going to keep on happening because uh, things are getting darker. Have you noticed? We're, things are getting darker. So let no man deceive you. And that's why there's a lot of things I could talk about. But I think one of the main things is, is that we know the Bible is a true word of God and we don't let these new translations take away their meaning and their emphasis and give us no hope, really, because Jesus Christ is our hope. Let no man deceive you by any means, for the day will not come unless the falling away come first. Well, this is the falling away, taking people to heaven on trips, saying that there's jello land in heaven. How can you even believe this? This this so-called prophet or whatever they call himself now is very popular. Very, very popular. And this is what people want to believe. They want to believe, oh good, we're going to go to heaven to Jell-O land. My kids are going to love Jell-O land. I mean, just think about that. H talk about bringing heaven to a man's imagination. I mean, John the Revelator, he couldn't even talk about it. It was just like there were no words. And he had the fear of God on him. These people, it's just so irreverent of, of what they saw, what they say they saw. So we have to listen. Who are you following? What preacher are you following that promotes 
extra biblical experiences, it's gonna not only affect you, but it's gonna affect your children because they're gonna, they're gonna want another experience. They're gonna want to have more excitement, more hype. Churches now are they're so hype. There's just the music and the lights. And I mean, that's been going on for a long time, but it's who's got the best show in town? I like the old fashioned, old preachers that preach the gospel. And you know, the Bible talks about gray haired people, that they have wisdom. Well, wouldn't the devil just love to shut up all the gray haired people full of knowledge and wisdom? That's what they want. They want to bring in the youth that know nothing, that are easily brainwashed and can, can just copy another, 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 and they want to be successful and famous. The Bible didn't promise any of that. And if you can find a gray-haired grandpa, sit down, that knows the Lord, you know, this is where wisdom can be found rather than some of these young people that, uh, Lord knows, what are they on? I don't know. <clears throat> but this is a, something, now I'm not pushing pop. I, don't, I personally, we don't drink pop, haven't for a long time. But this is about, there's a lesson here to be learned. Coke was the first soft drink in America and Pepsi decided to target the younger generation in a market move. And by 1980, Pepsi was taking off and gaining the market. To target the younger generation and regain ground, Coca-Cola came out with a new Coke. Do you remember that? The new Coke. It was sweeter and introduced as the new taste of Coca-Cola. It was a risk and it also was a big mistake. The Coke fans hated it. They wanted the old formula and didn't want it to change. Huge backlash. Coke admitted by changing the formula it wasn't the real thing. <laughs> They had compromised and changed. Coke apologized nationally, pulled new Coke off the shelves and brought back the original formula under classic Coke. When you have a classic, you don't change it. It's because of the pressure of a new gener or because of a pressure of a new generation. Well, same with our Bible. It's a classic and it doesn't need to be changed to fit a new generation. A Bible that's changing with no cross, no blood, no hell. All these things they're putting in because they want to reach a new generation, but they're not getting true converts. They're getting people that are just going to church and they're not being transformed and changed by the word. They're being entertained like circus goats. I mean, it's sad, but really what's happening is that they're not hearing the word. And we have a classic that doesn't need to have another translation. We don't have to have an update with words like I shared with you last week about how it's, it's been in the cards. It's been part of the end time plan to change the Bibles. The devil comes as an angel of light. He comes to steal, kill, and to destroy, right? So guard yourself and what are you reading? What translations are your children reading because this modern gospel has no repentance in it they don't repent they don't think there's anything wrong with sin they want to take away your conscience because when we do something wrong and we've all done stuff wrong we all have a past you look back and you think how could have i made those bad choices because we're fallen we need we needed a savior right well there's no repentance now just everything goes and people don't repent and repentance is how we get back on the right track. We feel bad, we, we come to the Lord and we ask for forgiveness, 1 John 1, 9, we, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to cleanse us and forgive, forgive us of all of our sins. He doesn't say, you know, stick a plate on your head and crawl for two miles, I mean, do anything hard, like some of these other religions make you do, just strange, weird things. He just says, repent, turn around, change your mind. Come to the point of, is there anything that's that important to get between me and the Lord? What is the sin that is so important to you that you can't give up for, for your relationship with the Lord? You have to come to that place of where nothing, you know, nothing is going to come between you and the Lord. And it's, it's a journey. But if there's a relationship, you know, that's taking you away from where you should be, sometimes you have to cut off those relationships. You're, you used to drink, now you're going to bars with your old friends. You're going to fall back into the ditch, right? Choose your friends wisely because as you choose your friends, so will you become. 
So there's no repentance, there's no fear of God. In these translations, there's no holiness. And the Bible says, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. We want to do right. We want to do what's right. We want to say simple prayers, keeping in our, our relationship with the Lord. But sin separates us from all that. So is, is the sin worth it? You look back in your life, was that sin worth it? No, because there's always consequences. Consequences are, if God forgives you, but there's consequences. So you, you tell your kids, you might, you know, you might be doing this and this and this, and I might not know about it, but there's a consequence you're going to have to face. So that's why we try to teach them, because there's no holiness today. It's like everything goes, you're the oddball out, because you're not accepting it. We don't want to offend the dummies and the idiots. We just don't want to offend them. God says, we don't want to offend him, right? So have the biblical doctrines such as salvation by grace, repentance, and the reality of a literal hell been changed in order to have a new Coke? They don't even preach on hell anymore. Well, God won't send anyone there. That's what they say. Who are we to change the message? Who are we to change the message? I would have a total fear if I changed the Bible. If I was one of these guys that said, well, I, you know, Oh my word, there's no fear of the Lord. Who are we to change the message? The new evangelicals, the new prophets and apostles want experience and feelings and entertainment over truth. And they're going on these trips. Lord knows there's familiar spirits or something weird that's leading them there. Transcendental meditation, different kind of spiritual experiences they're having, but they're not from the Lord. The emergent church movement is a complete redefinition of Christianity. They question the authority of the Bible. And now they're saying you have to have an experience in church. You need to have, you know, make sure that you give your people that come to church an experience. So they're under all this pressure to entertain more and more and more. The pastors in today's, you, you have to die to all that because they compete with the person next, you know, down the street and that, you got to have a bigger show. How about just, people today are looking for preachers that'll just speak truth. We don't want all that hoopla. We don't want all that stuff. We want the simple gospel being preached. I'm telling you, people are having a hard time finding churches. And many use our online church as a church because they can't find a church in their area. They just want to be able to not have to, you know, check everything out. No, I don't feel good about that. And I just don't. Not saying that we all can't grow, but there's so much deception out there. All by design. The devil in the, in the new system that's coming wants to bring Christianity down. So you have to be aware. Our fight is the fight of truth. We want to know truth. Stand up for truth. Uh, to them... Sin and evil don't exist. Peace and love are the ultimate realities as we all unite. Now, there is a book, and I'm closing with this, Mystery Babylon. And they talk about, this is a quote from that book, ecumenicalism is essential in creating a Christianity which embraces all religions. Psychology plays a major ecumenical role all these people now that are going to psychiatrists and they talk about their inner child, there's, you get saved and you move on. You don't get, keep going over your past. They make a lot of money on your old wounds. They just keep making more money and you, know, you keep going around that same circle and you know, move on, forgive, let, let go of the past. It's done. Now you're destroying your future by keep talking about your inner child. I had this lady that was telling me she went back into the, her mother's womb and she was, I was just, these are teachings that people are going through. It's just like, that is not in the Bible. But this is part of ecumenicalism. Uh, psychology, it plays a major ecumenical role by providing common faith, language, and a ritual for everyone from atheists, occultists, to evangelicals, to all of them. It's just, let's all lump them together. And it's, it's sad. So the ancient wisdom of Babylon is really rising. This isn't the Bible. This isn't what the Bible teaches. It's paganism coming in with spiritual clothing, 
different names, different experiences, even people, the kundalini spirit is practiced uh, with a lot of charismatic people. It's also in India and Hinduism. <laughs> it's, it's totally a different spirit. And <coughs> an example, Al Gore in his book, Earth in Balance, believes we should have a mother goddess that we can worship. He points back to ancient religions and Hinduism, and we should worship Gaia, Mother Earth, that man and nature are one, and that God is part of nature, and nature is part of God. In page 258 in his book, he says he departed from the Baptist faith and entered into the New Age religion. So that is New Age. Yep. Father, we thank you for opening our eyes to some of these things are hard to digest. They're hard to even believe that's happening. But you told us that they would. You said in the end times that men will get evil, that evil men will wax worse. And this is a day we're seeing so much. But we have to know the truth. And the truth is found in your word. And we just pray that you would lead us and guide us by your Holy Spirit. That we would not be deceived by these new translations that take, really it takes you out of the picture. And it puts man in its place. And it's all about what we do, our dreams, everything about us. And it doesn't even have a relationship with you. Because that takes admitting that we're in sin and that we've fallen and we need a savior. And that's how you get saved. You must confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and you'll be saved. So Father, we thank you for the truth. Keep people from deception. Keep us from deception. And I pray, Father, we won't be weary in well-doing. We all need to be encouraged in this hour and help us find friends that are walking on the same path. In Jesus' name. And I want to take this time to thank all our viewers. We are viewer supported. And without you, we couldn't exist. We don't have anyone else supporting us, any ads or anything, because I don't want to be controlled. I want to be able to say what God tells us to say. And that's that we want to hear well done when we're, that's it. We don't have an agenda here. We just want to say, Lord, we did the best we could. We've come out of deception and now we want to expose the deception for people that have ears to hear and they want the truth. So thank you. Thank you for helping us. We couldn't do it without you. We appreciate you so much. If you would like to see more messages from Roberta on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to her YouTube channel, Roberta Morrison. Hit the bell button to be notified of new messages from her and be sure to check out her YouTube playlist for other messages that interest you. Go to the livinginhispresence.org website page and click on the Messages button on the top center to go see her messages. There are free audio downloads of the messages available also. We are viewer supported. On the main web page at the top right is a Give button. Thank you for watching and see you next time.